You guys eating all your hay over there? What are you doing? Hey, buddy. What are you doing? Oh my goodness. Good morning. Good job. You drank all your bottles. Everybody's doing so good. Say hello, Bucky Boo. Hello, Butterbean. Hey, sweetheart. Woo! <laughs> I love it. <laughs> good morning, guys. Welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. We're on day three-ish kinda of the polar vortex. I've got some questions to answer for you guys. And I'm just gonna go around real quick and show you everybody's doing great, no problems. We're gonna move one of our roosters to the house later. He's doing fine, but I do want to uh, ensure that he doesn't get frostbite on his comb. I'm probably gonna have to take some Vaseline out to some of the critters this afternoon. You just have to keep doing things. It's like a rotation. Every few hours, you do the same thing over and over again. Water feed, hay, straw. Water feed, hay, straw. But then you have to time extra chores as well in terms of care for your farm critters. So, whew, we've done everything this morning. I've milked the goat and uh, everybody's doing great. No problem so far. A little thirsty because the waters freeze up, but you just have to keep it going. So welcome back to Appalachia's Homestead. Let's get busy. It's going to be a busy day. Hey, and there's Fritzy, and there's Coco. Are you sad? Never, never sad. Good morning, Enoli. How's my snow beast? How you doing, girl? You chasing away all the deer? You want to play? Yeah, I know. Good girl. All right, everybody's doing good. Boy, y'all suck down them extra buckets of water. Girlfriend, I can't, I know, honey, I can't come play snowman. Girlfriend, I know. All right. I'm gonna step in here to my office just for a few minutes. I wanna let you know that tomorrow, which is Wednesday, is gonna be our coldest day. We are right now, we've, we've bumped up to about 20 degrees. I know that's a sauna for a lot of y'all. <laughs> uh, we were five when we got up this morning. We've now pushed up to 20. By late this afternoon, we're gonna start dropping again. Tomorrow, we're pretty much gonna be somewhere in the zone of zero to negative three. It keeps changing, everything keeps changing. Originally, they said we might get some precipitation. Um, I would say where I'm at, we are at least 10 inches of snow. At first, they told us we might get two to four, three to five. Uh, it didn't stop snowing till about 10 a.m. this morning, which is what I said in my video. That just, hi Fritz, yeah. So. Here's the deal. So I'm going to answer a couple of questions. I'm just going to be completely blunt because my fingers are frozen and I want to get this out. Okay. I also want to say real quick that the next video or two that I do um, are probably going to be more indoorsy for the next day or two for obvious reasons. Um, I don't want my phone to freeze. And like I said, when we get out here and we work and it's 20 or below, you know this, I don't have to tell you, there's no time to mess around. Things freeze too fast and you got to get your work in, get get back, get thawed out so you can turn around a couple hours and come back and do it again. So I just want to let you know. It's not too windy today. You'll, you, there's a little bit of a gust coming through. That tarp I showed you on my last video, man, I'm telling you what, it makes all the difference in the world. 
So if you've got a little barn or shed like me, and maybe you've got a gate, but you don't have an actual door that will close, it is worth your investment to get you some of those nicer insulated tarps. It really makes it a lot easier. And nobody's had any trouble in there overnight, and I'm just tickled to death about that. What I'm about to do before I answer your questions is give this guy some nubbies. Mwah. Um, I'm going to take about a half a bell of straw down and put it out in front of my silkies so they can come out. They're not going to, but I'm going to put it there to know I did. Uh, and check on everybody because uh, the boys did my chickens for us. And um, but th th I wanted to wait until it pretty much stopped snowing because why put down straw if it's going to get three more inches of snow on it? I mean, with the way the snow was coming down yesterday, that just wouldn't have worked out. But here's the deal. So I've had a couple of questions and I'm going to answer them for you. But first... Let me put my glove back on my hand, okay? Hang on. <laughs> okay, I hope you can hear me. Let's make this short and sweet. I know a lot of you are new to my channel, and I welcome you here, and thank you for being here. A lot of you have been with me for the past almost 10 years on YouTube, and if you have been, then you know the full story that we have livestock guardian dogs. Many homesteaders and farmers have to address this a lot along with why your dairy cows are skinny or why you do this or why you do that. And that's simply because the main a majority of the population on the planet has no concept of how animals do in hot or cold or that dog, certain, certain breeds of dogs are actually working dogs. They're not meant to lay on the, in front of the fire in your house all day long. Uh, they may do that, but that's not what they're actually designed for. So I'm only going to address the dogs that I have, uh, and I've done this before, and, I'm, and that's fine. I'll do it again because some people just don't know. And you have really warm, gushy hearts for do every creature on the planet, which is wonderful. Um, when it comes to certain farm dogs, I'm specifically talking about purebred livestock guardian dogs and even the mixes of the livestock guardian dogs, say like a Great Pyrenees and an Anatolian Shepherd. I have one. They are not actually meant to be indoor chihuahuas, okay? I know that sounds brass, but I don't know how else to say it. They are meant to be working farm homestead dogs. They are not herding dogs. They are not lap dogs. They are not dogs to take to food lion and walk around with on a leash. They are meant to be out on a farm guarding it, guarding livestock, okay? They are actually not meant to guard birds, that's very difficult. Hi, Ginger. Did you decide to come out? We've got another visitor. Um, so when people see Cochise in the barn or they see Enoli running out in the snow, they think that I'm mistreating my dogs. Uh, n on the contrary, this is the weather that they actually live for. These dogs are bred and have been bred and used for hundreds, if not thousands of years to be with sheep and goats and and. Well, cattle, they can be with cattle, although some cows don't like dogs, like one of my dogs, one of my cows, excuse me, Lovey hates dogs. She hates them. So here's the deal. Um, some of you are asking, is Cochise sad? Is he hurt? Well, here's the deal. Cochise will be 10 years old, okay? Cochise is getting way up in years. He's doing very well. He does have a little bit of arthritis. I do give him uh, glucosamine when he will take it, Okay. Uh, and I try to brush him as often as I can, but he despises that too. He actually is very stubborn. He's probably the most stubborn dog that I have, okay? These dogs have a mind of their own, and oftentimes you will find with the breeds of livestock guardian dogs that the Pyrenees is actually low end of the totem pole in terms of, I'm, gonna try, I'm just going to use a word here, um, aggression. Now, they'll flat out put you down. Uh, you know, you're not coming in my barn. Cochise isn't necessarily going to be chasing a bear, I don't think, at this point. But he does prevent them from coming into the barn or close to the property because they know exactly what he's made of, okay? Enoli is a female that I have up here with him. She's actually more of the outdoor creature here in terms of the canines. Uh, Cochise has taken more of a, re I don't want to say he's retired because that's not true. He's not retired, but he stays more inside the barn and watches the front of the barn. That's why you see him positioned that way. He has been this way for years. 
If you go back in my videos four, five, six years ago, you will find he was doing a lot of the same thing. Now, he would go out more and patrol, but he would come back and he would sit like he's almost like the Lion King sitting on his perch looking out, okay? And he alarms everybody when something is wrong or something is happening. Enoli, who is my younger livestock guardian dog over here, she is obviously younger. She's more viable. She actually stays with the goats a whole lot more. Um, and the part of the reason for that is, number one, she's younger. But number two, when I got her as a puppy just, what, two, two years ago? She was a puppy placed with the goats and all the goat babies, okay? Cochise, when I got him, was a lot more of a melancholy soul. These dogs are extremely sensitive. They are extremely <laughs> melancholy. To, some of them can be, and they are incredibly intuitive, okay? What that means is, is you have to understand, for the most part, these dogs are business. They're not out here chasing sticks and playing fetch. You go down to my house, I got five dogs down there that will play fetch with you all day long, lay on the couch with you all day long, beg for treats all day long. These are not these types of dogs. So there are about 30 or so in that ballpark, different breeds of livestock guardian dogs. There are books on all of these dogs. You can Google and read all about these dogs and you will quickly find out if you spend a little time, I don't mean that harsh, I'm just saying they're not a lab, okay? They mean business. They bond to their location. So here's the deal. I have taken Cochise away from his barn. N notice how I said that? His barn. That's not my barn. He's the farm chief. That is his location. And if you take him away from it, he gets physically ill. When I had him neutered, that is the most aggressive and stressed I've ever seen that dog. I have a video from years ago on that. I thought he was going to die. I really did. I didn't think he was going to make it. And he was so aggressive at the vet office because he was out of his location. He didn't understand where his babies were, all of the above, that they literally wouldn't touch him until they basically knocked him out. They said he was incredibly aggressive. Does he look aggressive here to you? No. The vet wouldn't touch him. He was so aggressive. Um, because they are bred to bond. They bond incredibly hard to their location and to their babies. Those are his babies in there. Those are his kittens in there. Those are his goat babies in there. That is his barn. Enoli, I wouldn't ever, ever, ever allow somebody just to walk into my field knowing she was out there. She looks fun. She's running in the snow. She wants, you know, yeah, she does like a few treats. She's very spoiled. But I'm telling you, if you are a stranger and you come on my property and you walk up to that fence, the dog you see on camera with me or with my goats is not the creature that you are going to encounter. Now, I also have Cora. Cora is a is the most aggressive dog that I have on the property. And I'm telling you right now, I don't mean to sound like Billy Bad Butt, but she'll put you down, okay? Females, a lot of times, can be more aggressive. That's with any dog, but she's very protective. Enoli proves the point of bond. Because when I got Eno, excuse me, Cora, 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 Cora. Cora, I got about five years ago. I got her to be a mate to Cochise, and he would not accept her. I thought he was going to... I thought he was going to kill her. So we ended up bringing her to the other side of the farm. She guarded my ducks, my geese, that area, part of the house. So she took on that mental role of this side of the farm. So Cochise and Cora <laughs> knew each other were there, but they were a little bit separated because he was so aggressive with her. So she ended up bonding in that way. So she's down closer to the house and she helps watch the chicken coops, the other dogs and everything. And I'm telling you, she is a great Pyrenees Anatolian shepherd mix. However, she is Anatolian dominant. An Anatolian shepherd, in my opinion, uh, is a far more, let me take my glove off, is a far more aggressive breed with, in my experience, than just the Great Pyrenees. I don't underestimate either one of them. I'm just saying, typically, when you talk to farmers, when you compare a Great Pyrenees to an Anatolian, the a level of intensity tends to come down with the Great Pyrenees. That's why people love them. But here's the thing. Go to a shelter right now, okay? 
you're going to probably find Great Pyrenees mixes or Great Pyrenees all together that have been literally thrown out or surrendered because people do not understand these dogs. They think that they are Chihuahuas or little Pomeranians. No, that is not the case at all. They are very stubborn. They are very intellectual. They are very intuitive. They have a mind of their own and they have a job to do, which is not necessarily to please you while you're watching Days of Our Lives. They are meant to be out patrolling and protecting something, okay? They will bond to you, but if you give them a job, like I have given all of my dogs a job, if I brought them to the house, they would stress out because you instantly take them away from what they know and what they think they should be doing. Now, in terms of weather, they love this weather. I don't stress about my uh, livestock guardian dogs or my cows when it gets to zero degrees. If, as long as I know they've got shelter, they've got fresh straw, they've got the basic needs that they need, they do great. This is their thing. Their coats can handle it. Their bodies can handle it. I stress out... Far more with 90 or above, even though their coats can handle that too, the way that they're insulated. Um, they can handle the weather fine at 90 or above, but I'll tell you, it gets a little bit tougher. Zero is their zone. So in terms of my livestock guardian dogs, they are all doing great. Yes, Cochise is getting older. I am adding another male this year, a male puppy. I tried to this past year, but who I want to get them from, uh, the mama didn't take. So there's no puppies yet. So I am looking for and hoping to get sometime this year, God will provide it when it's ready, a farm-ready 10-week male puppy. Not to replace Cochise, but to put more with Enoli outside. Because, again, like I said, Cochise is going to be 10 years old. I mean, he's lived a full life, and I, I don't see him going away anytime soon. But let's be honest, he's not going to do the job of a three- or four-year-old when he's 10. I mean, that's just the way it goes. So I hope I answered your questions about the livestock guardian dogs. I apologize if the phone is shaking, but I took my glove off. <laughs> and, well, it's a little chilly. Okay, let me know if I didn't get that clear. Okay, not being not being a smart aleck, just saying I'm trying to talk fast and get the point out there. So there's that. All right, let's cut this straw and get down to the silky chalet and make sure everybody's doing good down there. And I bet you if they've plopped an egg at all, I bet it's frozen. <laughs> All right, guys, let's get this moved. Gabriel did good. Let's move this and get you spread out. Your, your little feetsies are going to be so much warmer, guys. Let's put it out. we doing? I see a couple eggs. Everybody looks good. Hi. Alright guys, I'm going to conclude the video, take my fresh eggs in, 
the big coop didn't really have any eggs yet. Not surprised, it's cold. I hope I answered your questions in terms of the livestock guardian dogs. They are a different breed than what most people are used to. And even within that, each dog has their own specific personality. Cochise has always been more melancholy, a little bit more low key, unassuming, sensitive and intuitive, okay? Now, like I said, he is getting older, so we continue to love on him, make life easy, let him do his thing, and his thing is the barn. All right, like, subscribe, and share. It's time for something very warm and luscious to eat. Maybe some homemade vegetable soup that I opened yesterday. Did you see that? I put that in my community page, my homemade vegetable soup. I know, I've got a hair here. Hey, whatever. Like, subscribe, and share. More videos coming your way. Stay very safe and warm out there. Check on the elderly. Yes, bring in your pets. Absolutely. And make sure you are running your faucets. <laughs> Don't let those pipes freeze. We'll see you on the next video, guys. Stay safe out there and God bless.